In this video, I'm going to talk about five myths about carrying out electrical work here in the UK. And some of these myths are things that I hear even today. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is kitchen sockets. One thing that I sometimes hear people say is that a kitchen socket above the worktop has to be at least a metre away from the kitchen sink. This is not the case. In fact, the wiring regulations doesn't specify a minimum distance between a kitchen sink and the edge of a socket. It just says that the installation has to be suitable for the environmental conditions. Having said that, it is recommended that socket outlets should be at least 300 millimeters from the edge of a kitchen sink. Now this obviously refers to sockets that are above the kitchen worktop. Where we've got sockets below the kitchen worktop, obviously we do need to be careful um, you know, where sockets are located close to pipe work, you know, just in case there's any leaks or anything like that. Now, while I'm talking about kitchen sinks, another myth that sometimes comes up is, do kitchen sinks need to be bonded? And the answer is no. This is something that goes back to the 15th edition when the requirements for bonding were different to what they are now. But ever since the 16th edition was published back in the 1990s, there has been no requirement to apply supplementary bonding to a kitchen sink. Now, one possible reason why you might need to run a bonding conductor to under the kitchen sink is if that happens to be where the incoming water supply comes in. And if that is a metal pipe, then that would be an extraneous conductive part and that needs to be bonded. So that's one example of where we might need to run a bonding conductor to where the kitchen sink is located, but we don't need to bond to the kitchen sink. Staying with bonding, another question that sometimes comes up is, do the bonding connections for the gas have to be in the gas meter box? And the answer is not necessarily. Bonding connections should be installed as close as possible to where the extraneous conductive part enters the building, preferably within 600 millimeters of where it enters the building, and it should be accessible and installed before any branches in the pipework. This is because if a branch in the pipework was later removed, that would mean that the bonding connection would later be removed as well. So we have to install bonding connections before any branch in the pipework. Having said this, the meter box is usually the most convenient place to put the bonding for the gas. So if we can install it there, all well and good, but if we can't, then it's not usually a problem. As long as we install the bonding connection as close as possible to where the pipe enters the building and it's accessible and before any branches in the pipe work. One tip that I can give you is if the bonding connection is not somewhere that's obvious to anybody that might come along and do an inspection later on, then it's a good idea to put a note in your electrical certificate as to the location of any bonding connections that aren't obvious. Another question that sometimes comes up is regarding extract fans in bathrooms or shower rooms. And people sometimes ask if an extract fan in a bathroom or shower room has to be safety extra low voltage. And the answer is not necessarily. In zone one of a bathroom or shower room, fixed current using equipment can be installed in zone one, provided that it's suitable for that zone according to the manufacturer. Section 701 of the wiring regulations specifies what type of equipment you can install in which zone in the bathroom or shower room, and also specifies a minimum IP rating. Now, typically I used to use a safety extra low voltage extract fan in bathrooms, but do remember that if you do use a safety extra low voltage fan, that the spur and the transformer need to be located outside of the zones. Another myth that I sometimes hear about electrical work in the UK is about the fire rating of consumer units. And I sometimes hear people say that we have to make sure that consumer units are fire rated. Since 2015, when the third amendment of the 17th edition was published, new consumer units installed after that date have to be made of non-combustible material or installed in an enclosure that is made of non-combustible material, which basically means metal. However, there is no requirement in the Warren regulations for the consumer unit to be fire rated. So there's no need to use uh, fire rated glands or any kind of fire, fire sealant inside the consumer unit at all. One thing that we do need to do is to make sure that the IP rating of the consumer unit is maintained. So the fire rated glands that we can get from manufacturers are good for maintaining the IP rating and also ensuring that there's sufficient mechanical protection for the meter sales. I talk about this in another video on my channel and I'll put a link at the top of the screen.